Good morning, it is Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022, and I am Pastor Mark Dilley of West Valley Grace Fellowship. I pray that the message this morning will be used to strengthen you in your faith and encourage you in your walk with our Savior and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Open your Bibles, if you'd like to follow along, to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. We've been on this for four weeks, and I think we will still have one more week to finish it up. Ephesians 4, 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. And so we're focusing right now on the seven pillars of unity. There is one body. Now this is a unique or an exclusive truth in this unity. This is only revealed in the one faith. That there is one body, the body of Christ. There is one spirit. That's not unique to this dispensation or to this body of truth. It's a common or shared element. There is one hope that is unique to this body of truth because our hope is that glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's going to take the church, the body of Christ, off the earth to him in the clouds and then ultimately to heaven. There is one Lord. That's not a unique truth. That's a common truth or a shared truth throughout the scriptures. There is one faith, the gospel of the grace of God. And there is one baptism. This is unique for today. There are other baptisms in the Bible. There are spiritual baptisms in the Bible but the baptism for the church, the body of Christ, is unique. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I believe this baptism is not related in any fashion to the Jewish ritual of water baptism, which I believe has been carried over into the church, the body of Christ, by many teachers by many sincere believers, but I believe it is inappropriate for today. Not that it does any significant harm or anything like that, but it is just not part of this unique revelation called the church, the body of Christ. And so this facet of the gospel, the grace of God, which had been kept secret since the beginning of the world, until the ascended Lord Jesus Christ revealed it to the Apostle Paul. This secret, this secret revelation is identified or characterized as the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. That's Romans 16, 25. Acts 20 and verse 24, the Apostle Paul tells his beloved brethren and as he's uh, getting ready to go to Jerusalem and he knows there's suffering and everything else ahead of him he says this but none of these things move me neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. 
the gospel of the grace of God is only identified in Paul's letters. That is the only place where this gospel is proclaimed. It is in this gospel that God reveals the mystery, a body of truth that God had kept hidden in himself, but is now made known. This is the one faith by which Jesus Christ is to be proclaimed today. Romans 16, 25, the Apostle Paul writes, Now to him that is of power to establish you by my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. You see in Paul's letters several different places he talks about this unique faith, this unique body of truth that God had kept secret. It's not hidden in the Old Testament. Or I'm sorry, it's not there in the Old Testament. It's hid in God. And it was never known or revealed until Jesus Christ made it known to Paul. And it is only in this gospel, the grace of God, that we have the revelation concerning the church, which is his body, the body of Christ. It is in this one faith that we are told that Gentiles at the present time are one with Jews in this new man. The Gentiles were not added in to Jerusalem. The Gentiles have not replaced Jerusalem. Uh, Israel. The Gentiles and the Jews today are bonded together into one new man. It has nothing directly to do with the gospel of the kingdom and the preaching of Jesus Christ while he was here on earth. He never referenced the gospel of the grace of God. And so let's look at Ephesians 2.15. But the Lord said unto him, Ananias and Paul, but Ananias did not want to go and uh, see Paul necessarily because he'd heard all about what Paul had done. And so here's what the Lord says to Ananias. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he, Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings, and the children of Israel. This gospel is often referenced as the faith in Paul's epistles. This is the one faith. Now I'm fully aware that most of the redeemed today, most of the members of the body of Christ, have been taught that they should follow the Lord by being baptized like he was. I was taught that. And at the time, being ignorant of the revelation of the mystery, I was taught that if I wanted to be faithful, and if I wanted to serve the Lord, I must be obedient and get baptized. I was sincere in my desire to do the Lord's will, and so I was baptized. At that time, I would have adamantly disagreed with anyone who didn't think I had done the correct thing. But now I believe with all my heart that that baptism didn't hurt me in any fashion, but it was done in ignorance, not knowing the one baptism for today. And should anyone be observing this or hearing this video, I can imagine you may never have heard of this one baptism. I've asked people in the past, how many times have you been baptized? And they look at me rather quizzically. And then some will say two. Others, most of them will say once. And I, I say, tell me about it. And they will describe the ritual of water baptism. And I too say, well, I was baptized three times. Once as an infant, once as a believer in Jesus Christ, and then one more time that I didn't even know about. I wasn't aware that I was baptized. And the sad truth is, 
most people today are not aware of this one baptism, this unique baptism for the church, the body of Christ. And so let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And listen carefully to what's written here. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. You see the connection of the one spirit, the one body, the one baptism? The Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the body of Christ. And Paul says here, we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. This is the one baptism that the Spirit of God performs by placing believers into the body of Christ. And being in Christ, every believer is complete. There is nothing more to be done in that regard. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And when it says ye are complete in him, it's saying you have been given all the fullness already in Christ. Being baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ identifies each believer with the death of Christ on the cross, his burial and his resurrection. Water baptism cannot do any of this. Now I'm fully aware because of my past experience that water baptism is promoted or presented as an outward sign or something that we can show the world our faith. And it talks about uh, when you go under the water, you're being buried with Christ. And when you come up out of the water, you're being raised with Christ. All those things sound very logical and reasonable and good. But there is simply no scriptural support that would identify water baptism in that fashion. There is no place in scripture where anybody is ever buried in water. And so let's look at water baptism in some of the scriptures. And I, I, I think we better, even in fact, I think we better stop here for today. And to just, I encourage you to read the scriptures that I've referenced and if you don't have the notes, please contact me and we can have the notes emailed to you every week. Um, but I think I better stop here because the next part I'm going to talk about may take a considerable more amount of time than I want to dedicate today. So for today, there is one baptism, there is one faith, there is one hope, and there is one body. That is the distinctiveness of the church, the body of Christ. The one spirit, the one Lord, and the one God are common throughout the scriptures. But this marvelous gospel of the grace of God is exclusively found in Paul's letters. He is the apostle to the Gentiles. He was sent by Christ to take a message to the Gentiles. And I'm saddened to say that most of the church today is ignorant, I guess, of that reality and are sincerely and faithfully trying to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. And not that there's anything wrong. Christ did nothing wrong. We know that. But he did not come for the Gentiles at that time. 
He said himself, I am sent only to the lost house of the nation of Israel. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you as our Father and our God. And for those of us that have trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior, believing he died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, our heart's desire is to know you and to do your will. And so, Lord, teach us the truth of your word. I realize what I've shared today is a... Uh, uh, confusing to some people and other people it uh, is uh, unbelievable for them at the present time so we trust your spirit to illumine our hearts to your truth for it's in Christ's name we pray amen